What is indexing? How does it work? By the end of this video, you will understand how to participate with the upside potential of the market without your money at risk in the market. Get ready. This is going to blow you away. So, I'm Doug Andrew. I've been a financial strategist and retirement planning specialist now for north of 48 years. Helping people optimize their assets, minimize taxes, and empower what I call their authentic wealth. If you've read any of my books or watched other educational episodes, my favorite financial vehicle or instrument that allows you to accumulate your money tax-free and then be able to turn on tax-free income or just access money tax-free for any reason. And then at the end of the day, when you ultimately pass away, anything left in the account blossoms, increases in value and transfers income tax-free is a max funded indexed universal life insurance contract. And so in this episode, I'm going to explain what indexing means. Because when these were first introduced clear back in 1980 by E.F. Hutton, who was not an insurance company, if you've watched any of those episodes, uh, Hutton basically said, what are we thinking? Let's put money into the multi-trillion dollar insurance companies, because that's the backbone of America, the insurance industry, and uh, increase the liquidity, the safety, and the rate of return because they're tax-free. And those come under three sections of the code, 72E, 7702, and 101A that I explain in other episodes. But I compare this metaphorically to a bucket. Indexed Universal Life was introduced in 1997 when interest rates started to come down so that people could have the choice to earn a higher rate of return than just the, what is called the general account portfolio rate, which I'm going to explain here in just a moment. Again, you're designing an IUL policy like a bucket, a repository. You want to uh, structure it to accommodate the amount of money that you want to put in there, okay? so that you can access it tax-free. And so you want all of the interest in the growth to be tax-free and you want to be able to access the money tax-free down the road. And so we have to have a minimum amount of insurance because the objective is for living benefits. So if I'm a male age 60 and I wanted to put in $500,000, you don't have to put that in all at once, of course. In fact, you can't if you want to turn on tax-free income. The most you could fund that would be about 20% a year if you're a 60 year old. So a hundred thousand a year for uh, five years. And now you're grandfathered to access money tax-free. This 500,000 can grow to a million and two million and four million and eight million, which many clients have seen that kind of growth at an average return of 9.6%. But what you're trying to do is get the least amount of insurance. You could buy way more insurance than a million two fifty for 500,000. That's not the objective. You want the least amount. And you will learn in other episodes how this, as it grows, actually means the net amount between this and the death benefit gets smaller as you get older. The insurance can actually get cheaper as you get older if it's structured correctly. But let's talk about indexing here. Now, you can leave your money in that bucket and if you feel you know, bearish about America, that you think the economy is going to go down or we're gonna have a recession, you can just sit back and settle for what is called the general account portfolio rate. So the insurance company, they accumulate your premiums in your account with of course thousands of other people. And so that is your cash value in your contract. And so they have that money and they, they manage billions and even trillions. One, one of the institutions that has over three and a half trillion dollars, that's as much money as the IRS collects in taxes in an entire year. And this is one insurance company. So what do they do with these billions and trillions of dollars? They are extremely conservative. This is why banks and credit unions take 30 to 40% of their tier one assets for liquidity and safety and put it into these insurance companies because many times these insurance companies are rated AA and AAA and a lot of these banks are only rated triple B. So banks are taking the money you deposit in them and they only pay you 1% and they're turning around and putting some of that back into insurance companies, increasing the safety by five or six notches higher and they're earning maybe four or 5% and they're only paying you one. So they're earning four to five times what they're paying you and uh, it's tax-free, but 
the 1% interest they pay you, you have to pay taxes on. Hello? This is where a lot of savvy investors put their money. Now, if you had your money in the insurance company back in 1980, <laughs> interest rates were high. I mean, mortgages on homes were at 18%. CDs at banks were paying over 10. And so my uh, universal life policies, I never earned less than 11 three quarters, as high as 15 and a half percent from 1980 to 1990. But in the 90s, interest rates started coming down. And so in 1997, indexing came out. Now, there's a lot of financial advisors that think I'm talking about index mutual funds. No. An index mutual fund means your money is in an index like the S&P 500 actually in the market. And if you would have had a million dollars in an indexed mutual fund, the S&P index in the year 2000, you would have seen that million go down to 600,000 twice during that decade. No, that's an index fund. Your money is at risk in the market. It's just simply diversified in the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones. Indexing is not that. This is a strategy, not a commodity, okay? So let me explain this as simply as I possibly can. I'm going to take a snapshot in time and uh, let's say that uh, you started socking away 500 bucks a month 30 years ago in an IUL policy and now you have a million in there which many clients have easily been able to accumulate a million just socking away 500 a month. Or you could start out with a lump sum of 250,000 and put in 2,000 a month and in 10 years you'd have a million. Or if you put in 500,000 and you only earn 7.2%, you would have a million at the end of 10 years. So whatever it is, for you to understand this, I'm gonna take a snapshot in time. Let's say that uh, at this point in time, you have a million dollars that you've accumulated in your IUL policy, whether you've been doing this for years or just five years ago, okay? So you have a million of cash value. So every single year, you have some choices you can make. You don't have to, you can just let it go and it'll, it'll perform quite well. It's very management unintensive, okay? But if you meet with an advisor who understands what they're doing at least once a year, you can rebalance. So let's say that the insurance company on this money, your million and, and of course millions of other people's money, let's say that these billions and trillions of dollars, they have it in AAA and AA bonds. They uh, have it in mortgages on shopping malls and skyscrapers, but they only loan maybe 50, 60% loan to value. They don't loan 80% loan to value like mortgage companies do. So they're very, very uh, safe and conservative. If they have to foreclose on a skyscraper or a shopping mall, they come out smelling like a rose because they have a huge cushion uh, if they have to do that. And so that's why the multi-trillion dollar insurance industry has weathered the Great Depression and even the mortgage meltdown of 2008. They came through with flying colors. So let's say that the insurance company is earning 4% because we are in a low interest environment here the last decade or two. So 4% on a million is 40,000. You can just say, well, just give me, give me your fixed rate. Now, they're in business to make a profit, so they may take one of those 4% for them, and, and so you're earning maybe 3% if you choose that, which is three times what a bank may pay you, okay? And it's tax-free, so it's three times better than a bank and it's tax-free. Or, if you feel bullish about America, and you feel like, you know what, I think I can earn more than four, because I think the economy's gonna go up, but I don't wanna risk in case I'm wrong. That's the beauty of indexed universal life. What do they do? You simply say, I want to link to an index. I want to link some, or let's say all of the million. You don't have to do this with all your money and you can diversify. I'm just gonna keep this simple. You could take uh, 200,000 of that and link it to the S&P 500, another 200,000 of the Dow Jones, and then the Russell 2000, and then the Barclays US Dynamic Balance Index. You could leave the last 200,000 in there earning 4% if you want. You can diversify however you want. But let's just keep it simple and say you've got a million, and you want to link to the S&P, okay? I've done this many times just to one index. What are you doing? You're relinquishing that 4%. Your million dollars has to stay safe in the insurance company, earning four. You're not authorizing the insurance company to take your million and put it out in, in the stock market in the S&P 500. Well, then how can they afford to pay you what the S&P does? you're relinquishing the 4% interest that year. You're saying, 
you know what? You can take the interest on my million. You do not have to uh, credit that to me this year, but don't lose my principal. What do they do with that 40,000? They fund an options budget. They do this daily, okay? And so they buy upside options in the S&P in this example. Now, it's, it's quite simple. They're the number one purchaser of options in the world. They do this hourly. What does that mean? At the end of the year, if the S&P went up 8%, the 40,000 of options <laughs> gave them the wherewithal to pay you 80,000 on your million. They can afford to do this, okay? Because the options gave them the wherewithal. Maybe it went up to 12%, okay? And so they may uh, pay you 120,000 because 40,000 of options, the way that they purchase them, allows them to have 120,000 at the end of the year if the market went up, okay? Now they may only pay you up to a cap, maybe of 12% or some years caps have been 16%, 25%. But why do they do that? Because they will cap you because of the price of options. But what's the other benefit? That if the market were to lose 20, 30, 40%, the options expire worthless, but your money is still safe. Your million, you didn't lose one dime of your principal. And it's like Will Rogers once said, people get more concerned about the return of their money instead of the return on their money. Now, if this is already arousing some curiosity and you can think of somebody you ought to share this video with, be sure and do so and post a comment so that we can you know, respond and that we can help you understand it even better. Now, stay with me here. Sometimes you can choose indexing options with no caps, like many of our clients did in uh, March of 2020 to March of 2021. Then they subtract maybe 5% off the top a year later Many clients did that, and from March of 2020 to March of 2021, the market went up 66.33%, minus five percentage points. They netted 61.33%. Pretty phenomenal, right? But you do not lose any of your principal if the market goes down. The interest that funded the options, the options just expired worthless because the market went down instead of up. But you don't lose your principal. Now, you take any period, like the Great Recession, we start out in November of 1999 down here. And if we go over here to the same month in the year uh, 2012, okay? This is where people who have their money in the S&P, if you had, let's say a million dollars in here, you saw it go up and then 9-11 happened. And uh, from 2001 to 2003, for three years, a million went down to about maybe $600,000. Some lost 35%, some lost 50%. Let's just say 40. It took four years when you had your money in the market to make back what you lost because a 40% loss has to be followed by a 67% gain. 600,000 down here has to grow by 67%, 400,000 to get back what you lost. People felt like they had lost their future. They had to put off retirement seven years. And then what happened in 2008? As Warren Buffett put it, he said, when the tide went out in 2008, it revealed who was swimming naked. People weren't protected. They saw that million dollar nest egg go down to 600,000 again for the second time. And it took four years to come back and finally have a million $46,800, a measly 4.68% increase, which was gobbled up with the inflation rate at the time. That's money in the market. That's an indexed fund. Indexing, see, when you have your money in the market, you have to wait and make back the losses a 40% loss has to be followed by a 67% gain. But with your money in the market, if you do the math, this would only have been about one third of 1% interest compounded annually with your money in the S&P. No, what our clients achieved was this. By using indexing, they may not have made very much during these down years, but they didn't lose. And then when the market went up, they went up and maybe to a cap. But in that same time period, many of our clients had 130% instead of a 4% increase. What does this equate to? Let's go back to the year after I started in 1974. And in 1975, if you had $500,000 in the market, in the S&P, it would have looked like this in the red. Oh yeah, the 90s were great. But at the end of that time period, you would would have ended up with 5.6 million. Now with indexing, <laughs> you would have maybe not had as much some years, but at the end of the day, you would have had 8 million tax-free instead of 5.6. Let's summarize this. If you had your money in the market, a lot of heartburn, a lot of down years, 
and you might have ended up with 5.6 million. You may say, well, that, that's pretty good. Well, maybe inflation gobbled up a lot of that, but that's not the net. You have to pay about 1.8 okay, million in tax. You're only netting 3.8. Over here in the index universal life, you would have had 8 million tax-free. Which would you rather have, hamburger A or hamburger B? So that's the beauty behind this. And so I would recommend that uh, you really check out how indexed universal life can be the dream solution for your goals for retirement, maybe college funding for your kids and grandkids, business working capital, and make sure you study this book, The Laser Fund. It's 300 pages of charts, graphs, and explanations. If you have not claimed your free copy, be sure and do so by going to laserfund.com or click on the link below. You contribute a nominal amount towards the shipping and handling. I cover the rest of that and I will fire out a copy to you. But you can read this, you can listen and learn, you can watch and learn. But this is about you and your brighter future.